Hi, my name is Amanda Cavallaro. I work as a developer advocate at Vonage, and today we're going to build an appointment scheduler using Firebase, Node, Express, and the Vonage APIs. I'm always looking to connect and to learn more what the community has been up to, especially using our APIs, and also to let us know how we can support you, give us feedback on the documentation, how our resources are helping you out. Firebase helps you build and run apps. It's backed by Google and there are many people using it nowadays. There are startups to global enterprises. It allows you to accelerate app development with fully managed backend infrastructure, release with confidence and monitor performance and stability, to boost user engagement with analytics, A-B testing and messaging campaigns. It's time for us to set up the project we're going to use for this workshop. From the Firebase console, click to add a new project. Give it a name and make sure that the ID you're creating is something of your liking because once you click save and create project, that's going to be the ID and it cannot be changed. Select the option to enable or not analytics and click to create the project and wait for your resources to be created. Set the billing type by clicking on the gear icon followed by usage and billing then on the details and settings tab we're going to modify the plan to use blaze this pay-as-you-go plan is required when you're using a third-party api we're now going to create a firebase real-time database instance this type of database makes it possible for us to store and sync data among our users as its name says in real time People can then access the data via web or mobile, and it helps the user collaboration. Whenever we update data in the real-time database, this data is stored in the cloud and it notifies all the interested devices. Let's click to create a new database and select the location where the data will be stored. Then we're going to choose in which mode we're going to use it, either locked or in test mode. When it's set to locked mode, there are restriction access to your data and when you use it in test mode, you allow anyone to access it. We are going to add our own security rules going ahead, so choose either right now and now you have your real-time database instance created. From your terminal, install the Firebase tools with npm if you don't already have them by typing npm install g firebase tools. Next, type Firebase login. This will open a window in your browser which will either authenticate you automatically if you're already logged in or ask you for your credentials. Once that's complete, you now have the Firebase CLI installed. Whenever we're going to book an appointment, we expect some slots to be already taken. So let's create a myappointments.json file, which is going to contain some information previously. We are adding three appointments that have different dates and user IDs. I've created my myappointments.json file using Nano, but you can use any text editor that you wish. Save that file to your machine and import it from the real-time database UI by clicking Import JSON, then you click Browse, look for the file in your computer and import it to the real-time database. Now you can see all your three slots appear there. Let's add the database rules. The Firebase real-time database rules determine who can access your database, how your indexes are built and how your data is structured. From the Firebase console on the real-time database view, you can see rules. Click on that tab. You'll be taken to a screen that will allow you to edit your rules. We are going to add on the dots read when the data is allowed to be read by users and when it's allowed to be written and we're going to set the my appointments collection to be indexed by the date field. 
After that, we're going to click on Publish. In order to set up our project, we're going to create the folder. After that, we're going to change directory inside of it. We're then going to initialize npm by typing npm in it. This command prompts you to add information about the project. So you can add the package name, the version, a description of what this project does, the entry point file, the test command, the git repository, keywords, we're just pressing enter here and then you can add your author name, the license and if everything looks okay you can press return and open this in your favorite code editor. This file is going to use a number of dependencies. One of them is the Vonage Server SDK, .env, UUID, Express, Firebase Admin and Firebase Functions. Since we already created the project in the Firebase dashboard, when you are on your terminal, you can type Firebase in it to initialize Firebase and we're going to select to use an existing project, which will prompt you to choose the desired project. You can see my example with my project ID, I have Vonage Appointment Scheduler-1. I also chose to use the real-time database feature. We're also going to create a public folder to host our static files. We're then going to tell Express to read the static files from this public folder. Create the public index.html file that contains the content for the view to select a new appointment or to cancel them by adding a code. So let's start writing it. Did you know that the HTML input element has many types for date and time selection? For instance, we have date, date, time, local, time. For this workshop, we were going to use the input type date, time, local. This approach is perhaps not as robust as using a date, time library, as there can be some inconsistency, but it works for the purpose of this tutorial. So the user will be able to book slots every five minutes. Uh, so like it's time times ending in zero or five. So for instance, eight o'clock works, but eight o one doesn't work. We're also going to add inputs for the user to add their phone number, a span class for us to check the validity for the CSS uh, when a date and the phone number are inserted. We're also going to add a book slot button and a form action to cancel the appointment. And this is how our view should be looking now. Let's add some CSS. Create the styles.css file inside of this folder. And for this demonstration web app, we'll add some styling to center the contents on the page. We're also going to display a red cross in case the input is invalid and a tick in case it's valid. Add the styles.css inside the folder called styles. This is how your web page should be looking now. Once you click uh, a time which is uh, specific you can see it works you add the phone number it works too it says it's valid but if I put a non-exact time you can see there is a problem and if I don't add the phone number there is a problem too create the .env file and populate it with the below information the Firebase database URL can be found on the Firebase console the Vonage API key and the Vonage API secret can be found on the Vonage dashboard the Vonage phone number contains the number, name or brand that will appear as the sender of the message. And finally, the Vonage 2 number is the number that will receive the SMS messages. For today's workshop, I'm giving away a free coupon of 10 euros. So make sure that you add your service address. Once that's all added in, you can paste in the voucher code that we're giving away, which is 22 el GDNA. Once that's applied, you can see the balance has changed on the top left of the dashboard. With this new credit that you have, you can buy a number so that we can test the sending the messages that we're doing for this workshop.
make sure you add all of these variables to your environment variables file and let's crack on. We will create the server.js to tell Express how to handle the requests posted by the UI. From the root of your project, create a script folder and inside of it create the server.js. Open your package.json file and inside of scripts, we're going to add a command that when we run npm run start, it's going to run the script server.js file we've just created. Our web app will use Express and it will read the static files we have previously created from the public folder. We're also going to add dependencies and import files that we're going to use. It's time for us to create a Firebase service account. It can be used to authenticate various Firebase features. For our project, we're going to use the Firebase admin SDK to access our database URL. So from the Firebase console, click on the gear and select the service account tab. Copy and paste the admin SDK configuration to your project. I like to change var to const to keep it very consistent in here. Let's also change the path to the service account key to a file which is going to be added to the root of our project. Go back to the service account on the UI of the Firebase console and click to generate a new key. Once that file is downloaded, add it to the root of your project Rename it to the name that we gave, serviceaccountkey.json, and now the information is going to be read from there. We use initialize app to create and initialize a Firebase app instance that will use the slash my appointments Firebase database instance that we have previously created and populated from the Firebase console. We create the instance of the Vonage client class, initializing it with the Vonage API key and secret that you have previously added to your .m file. The HTML input type daytime local is formatted as yyyy-mm-dd-thh-mm. So we will write a function to separate the date from the hour by splitting it on the character T. For instance, in the example 2018-06-12T19-30, we would have 2018-06-12 for the date and 19-30 for the hour. It's time to create the appointment endpoint to handle the post requests for creating an appointment. This endpoint will check if the slot is available. It will add the slot to the Firebase database and finally it will send an SMS confirmation back to the user's phone using the Vonage Messages API. You may have noticed that much of the functionality within the request handler has not yet been implemented. So let's now expand on the stubs for the required functionalities. Let's create a function to validate if a slot is available by checking if the slot already exists in the database. We are querying ref.orderbychild date. Queries are allowed to order one key at a time. We have previously defined our index via the dot index on the Firebase rules for better performance. And we make sure to use dot once value to listen for exactly one event of the value and then it stops listening. The next function we're going to create adds both a slot and the code to the Firebase database. This code is required in order to cancel the appointments. Finally, once the slot is reserved, an SMS confirmation is sent back to the user with the message meeting booked at time on date. Please save this code in case you'd like to cancel your appointment. We then use the Vonage API method to send this message via SMS to a real phone. This Vonage Messages API integrates with SMS, MMS, and popular social chat apps. 
To finalize the business logic, we have this code which is responsible to call the previously created helper functions. If the slot is available, the user will have their slot added to the database and have the SMS back to them. Otherwise, they will be requested to choose a different time of slot. Let's create the cancel appointment endpoint that handles the post requests for canceling an appointment from the database by using a code provided by the user that they have received upon scheduling their appointment. The app will be listening on the port you have specified before. If this is run locally, you can access it by typing localhost colon port from your browser. In this URL, you can interact with the UI of this demo application and check the slots being added or removed on the Firebase console web page. To test everything we've done today, make sure that all the dependencies are installed and then to start it run npm run start. Now from the web app, you can notice that if you select the time, the phone number, click to add the slot, you can see it's being changed, it's being updated from the real-time database. In order to cancel a slot, you copy the code from the real-time database console UI, paste it to the UI of your web app, and once you click the button, it's going to be removed from the real-time database. You can see the updates from there. The code of what we've discussed today is available on GitHub, and there's also a written version of this uh, workshop as well. So there are various ways for you to learn and just let your creativity flow, create other types of appointment booker. Feel free to follow us on social media, apply the code we've given to you today and thank you very much. I hope to see you soon.